and welcome to NSLive.tv. My name is Carolyn Landry and I'm going to show you how to make a traditional Mi'kmaq drum today. Okay, first we start with a piece of elk hide. It doesn't have to be elk, but this is specifically elk. Uh, I'm going to make a 12 inch drum. This is the hoop, which is a light soft wood. This is the side of the elk that is that it has the um, the meat. This is the side that has the hair. So we're going to use the side on the outside of the drum head that has the hair. So we'll place that down. I have put uh, 12 sets of holes, which I will um, use for the lacing. So I will start with putting the hoop right in the middle of the, the drum head. Um, the drum head is cut about three inches around the hoop so that it comes over like this. So I just make sure that everything is even and then I will start with the lacing. Uh, before I came over uh, here to the studio today, I went and I found a nice little spot that's close by. It's called uh, the Gorge, and it's a very nice wooded area and it has trails, and so I thought it would be a good place to go and have a little smudge ceremony before I started this drum. Um, what I did was I, I blessed um, myself and the tools that I'm using, and um, then I offered tobacco, uh, thanking the animal, the trees, everything that's involved in the making of this drum. Um, and I, I try to keep that in mind as I'm making a drum, that the animal has sacrificed its life for this, for this drum. And by doing the, that ceremony, it, um, for me, it gives the drum a life of its own. So traditionally, the Mi'kmaq had the drum. It, represent the heart, it represented the heartbeat of Mother Earth, and it still does today. It's uh, one of the things that went underground for a while in our history, but it, um, it's come back. So, and it's, it's interesting to know that all the tribes around the globe have drums, all tribes. It doesn't matter if they're, in, well, indigenous, First Nations, or whatever. Um, everybody had drums, so I thought that was a very interesting fact to share. So I'll get started with this. So I want to make sure that everything's even. Now when I when I um, get the, the hide ready, I have a template here and I just go along. First, I, okay, let me go back a little bit. This is raw hide, so it's just not treated or anything. It's taken from the, from the animal and it's cleaned on both sides so that it, it looks like this. This has been soaked for about five hours and once you get started and um, it starts to dry out rather quickly. So what I do is once it's cut out to the desired um, size, I will take my template and of course this is for a 12 inch drum. So if it was bigger, you would have um, probably four more sets of two that you would have so that you would, the lacing would go around um, 16 times instead of 12 times. So I start this size drum. I found that uh, the 12 sets is, is really good. So what I do is I just mark it out like, sort of like a pie and I take my, my marker and I just go like this through the holes like that all the way around. Then when I'm done with that, I um, cut them out with a, with a whole leather punch. And then I just go through there so that the lace will go through those holes and that it's done evenly. All right, so we'll get started. So what we do is we start up here. No, let's start down here. What I'm going to do is just pull this through, make a simple knot so that it doesn't go through that hole there. 
And then I'm going to grab the other end. And for a drum, when you're making a drum and you, you, need, you want to know how much lacing you have or that you need, for each foot, um, you need, or, or sorry, for each across here. So this is a 12-inch drum. I need 20 feet of lacing. So go across, and you go. Down through the right. And up through the left. Want to pull too tight. Okay, then you go to the left because this normally wants, it just naturally wants to go to the left. So you come to the next set of holes and you go this here. there. So you go down through the right. And up through the left. Sometimes it gets a little twisted in there. You just have to manipulate it like so. And sometimes the twist mm. looks good, I think. Okay, then we're gonna go right across to this one. And we go underneath this here. This gives a better touch. Okay, and we go down through the right. When I was learning to do this, um, the guy teaching it said, down through the right and up through the left. Down through the right, up through the left. Read my lips, he'd say. So it kind of stuck with me. And up through the left. And that gives that nice pull like that. And it also brings it tighter to the to the wood so that you get a better sound. And the bigger the drum, the deeper the sound. You can go counterclockwise or clockwise or however um, you want to. A lot of people say go clockwise or I always found that as long as I 
stay consistent, it doesn't really matter. As long as you go down through the right and up through the left. I like to think about the spirit of the animal, not only the spirit of the animal, but the spirit of the tree and, and the, which the hoop is made from, and also the beaters. Um, everything that's involved in, in making of this drum. Because when I found that when you um, when you look at your drum after and you want to either paint it or whatever you want to do with it, it will have its a spirit of its own. Oops. Get that out. Get it out there. So now I have to just kind of slow down. It shouldn't be difficult, it should always be easy. again. In the old times, the drum was, um, is, but in the old times it was considered a, a feminine spiritual, spiritual thing where the big drum that is just used mainly by men is a is a masculine thing. So with the with the hand drum it's mainly used by women, but a lot of men use them these days as times change, I guess. get a little twisted, just maybe a little too much. You just pull the, the lace up and it'll come out through the, through the holes there. Go across here. Find it dries out fast once you start. Um, so I usually have a little bowl of water there, so when it does get too dry, I can just um, dip it in or get it wet somehow.
here are some drum kits that I've seen that are, they have dyed uh, hide, which are, are very beautiful to look at. And uh, then I've seen some that are uh, just like dyed white, which are very beautiful as well. I like to stick with the, with the undyed. Raw, because then I find just my just personally I find that uh, you can see the spirit of the drum better if you wanna if you wanna paint it or or whatever. I think I find it's easier to see the spirit of the drum. Okay, so we've gone all the way around. This is our starting point right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start with the handle. And we're going to find the middle of the drum. So when we have all this here, while it's wet, it's very pliable and you can kind of make it even so you don't have a bunch of wrinkles that are going to dry that way if you don't um, spread them out. Get them out a little bit like so. How you find that the center is you go like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'm going to take this, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to go underneath. Nope, I'm not going to do that. First, I'm going to tighten this up. So we go back to the start, we pull that. Don't want it too tight because it, when this dries, it's going to tighten up quite a bit. We can't have it too loose either. We won't get that nice sound. Okay, so it should. When you're done tightening it, it should. It should. When you push down, it should go about an inch, and I think that's about right. But you want all the tension to be the same on all of these. All right, so I think that's good to go. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to find the middle. Two, three, four, five, six, right here. Just go in the middle and you pull till you find the center. Yeah, because we've got 12 sets, 24 holes, we're going to divide this by three, four, one, two, three. So we'll have four sets of three for our handle. So. So. these three right here. These three. I'm going to wrap. And while you're doing the handle, if you want to do more, um, you can go up as far as you want really. Um, but when it starts to tighten up, you have to make sure that your tension stays the same all the way around. So I brought some extra just in case we, uh, we want to go up a little further than this will allow. I've seen them made like um, using like twine or rope or nylon or whatever instead of the, the lacing just until the drum has dried and then it's been removed and then uh, laced up later on which I've done myself and, and it really makes it easier to work with but I like to do it this way too. So when you get up so far, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight wraps. Put like a little knot there, half hitch, I guess. down. Now this is where it goes. I guess it uh, depends on what looks best for the... So it looks like it's just naturally going over here. So I'm going to move to these three right here. It kind of takes a natural tendency of its own, like I just kind of go with it. Yeah, it does. Um, we shouldn't let it dictate too much to us, but when it wants to go a certain way, then that's part of the life that I spoke about that uh, is taken on. So don't, don't fight it. Never fight it. No. Nope. If it's not going good or, or you feel that it's not, if it just doesn't feel right, you should always put it up and just come back to it later or um, never ever struggle with it because we want it to be positive. We want it to be, um, a, you know, a really positive force. When when you're drumming and singing and dancing with it, it uh, it should always be a positive thing. See where that wants to go next. Hmm. I would say. 
say it here. Sometimes it's off center a little bit and you can always make one side longer just as long as it's pretty much basically in the middle. And this will take, I don't know, probably four days to dry before you can play it or paint it. What would you paint it with? Um, I use acrylic paint. Yeah. I usually, what I do is I usually put a Unless I want to leave some of it bare, I will cover it with a, just a white wash, I guess, and then just draw or just paint right over that. Do that in episode two. All right. <laughs> okay. And we can see where this one here just is a little bit longer. I think what I'm going to do there no, I'll just leave it. Okay, and we just got this last one over here. And if something happens, you know, like if your drum gets damaged in any way, it can, it's one of those things that can usually be repaired, unless it's something that happens on the head, like this, that's a different thing. But if it, something happens back here, it's, it's so easy to fix that, you know, it's not anything to worry about. Even if one of these comes loose or whatever, for whatever reason, it's, very easy to repair. Just a, I don't know, like everybody has their different views on um, on the drum, like how you store it or how you how you where you keep it in your house or whatever. And the only thing that, like from my teachings and like my my mom's teaching and other people from this community, like around here, um, do not ever hang the drums on the wall. And I don't know why, but. It's just something that I never argued with. I just just never did it. And um, but it's I don't know. It's to each his own, I guess. And we can put a little. Or we could do something a little different, like so. Just with what's left. So 
So this was 20 feet of lacing. And uh, that's just about it. Just about every bit of it. And that's that. I'm going to cut this right here, but as this dries, I will cut that off closer. So now you can see where it's all wrinkly and sticking out there. So now what you do is you just make sure that all the wrinkles are out and you just use your hands to do that. There are going to be some wrinkles, but you just want them to be going straight down instead of twisted to the side. If, if you have a stubborn piece that just doesn't want to lay down flat, you can take like a little tack or those little, I don't know what they're, little push pins, I guess, and this one's going to work okay, but if you, if you ever do have that, you could just, like right here where it's a little stubborn, you could just put your little pin in there and hammer it in with that little hammer like that. And there you have it. There. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Did you stop? No? Okay. Um, these are the beaters that you can make them out of anything. This one's used from um, a hardwood dowel and a piece of deer hide. And I just, I sewed this one together after I uh, stuffed it with cotton batten. These ones here are just from willow trees and they just have a little bit of um, cotton batten in there with deer hide wrapped around the ends. And you can decorate those or have them playing. Okay, great, thank you.